hello, hello, everyone. Welcome to another edition episode. I don't know what to say of shoes. <laughs> Sorry. I just had a brain. Is it an episode? I think it's an episode. It's an episode, not an yeah. episode. Anyway, um, <laughs> hi, this is May, and I'm with Kelly Who. But as you can see, hello. our lovely Tamlin Tamita is not with us. No. And that's because she forgot that we had a date to record this episode. <laughs> oh, did you just hear that ping? Yeah, was that my ping or your no, ping? No, it was mine. I thought I turned my messages off. I turned mine off. In I fact, I closed mine out. What happens? I say quit Come messages. Come on, May. Super unprofessional. There are no quit messages. <laughs> Isn't that what you do? I said quit messages and it's still pinged. Why? Because oh, you have to put it on silent, on do not disturb. Oh, hang on. Hang on, people. Don't you know how to do that? No, I, not on my computer. I didn't think Wait, I had to what? do that. Do I? May. <laughs> how Wait, long have we been doing this? I don't know. Wait, how do you do do not disturb Okay, go on the, on the top. You're on Mac, right? Yeah. Go on the top. Next to the search bar, there's these two little toggle-looking things. Click on that. Okay. And then where it says do not disturb, click on that. Oh, wait a and minute. And then you can do not disturb for one hour or until this evening. I don't see the do not disturb. Wait, it's the moon. Oh, wait, maybe yours. Oh, I see. On, or focus. Maybe it's on focus. Yes, it's on focus. Know. Okay, I just said okay. do not disturb. There we go. Oh, I just learned a new trick from Kelly Who. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I am such an idiot when it comes oh, to computers. God. The fact that you would learn anything from me is a miracle. I know. I'm, th I'm thankful because I know how to do it on my phone, but I never knew how to do it on my, on my computer. So See, now all of this recording that you've been doing all of these years and you never, ever put it on do not disturb? What do you... <laughs> Do people just not message you? Do you not have friends, May? <laughs> um, no, you know what? There have been a few occasions when that would happen. I would just ignore it and be like, oh, shit, you know, whatever. But I That was loud and clear from my end. Oh, no. Okay. All right. Now, okay. Kelly Who came to save the day. Anyway, what I was saying, what we were talking about was Tamla Tamita <laughs> is not joining us because she kind of forgot that we had scheduled this recording. And we were pinging her, pinging her, waiting, waiting. And then she finally pinged back and said, oh, shit, I just woke up. <laughs> totally <laughs> forgot about this. And now she has a meeting, so she can't join us. Poor thing. She must be working so late. I'm I not know. surprised because that girl is a workhorse. I know because everyone, it's, a, it's about 1130 right now a.m. Yeah. Um, when we're recording this. So that means By she the way, probably was up all if night. I, if I ever tell you, oh, I just woke up, it's not because <laughs> I've been working. <laughs> Because I live in Vegas, and yeah, it is exactly. crazy over here. <laughs> okay, that's noted. Um, anyway, that's why Tamlin is not with us today, but that's okay. She's going to join us next time we do an, another recording of the show. So yes. it's just me and Kelly today, um, but yeah. it's been a while since we put out an episode, and the whole summer has gone by. Um, and we have traveled and you've gone to Europe. I went to Korea. And and no, no. We talked after I went to oh, Europe. That's right. We that's did right. not talk uh, after Burning Man. I was Burning on my Man. way to Burning Man. That's right. And yes. I went, and I went to France for a friend's wedding. So yeah. How was France? France? Well, okay. I'll, I'll quickly talk about France. France was beautiful. You know, France is always beautiful. It's, it's you know, Paris. Was it in gorgeous. Paris? Well, the wedding was in Normandy. Ooh. And it was in a small, tiny little town, like a typical French country town. Oh, I love those. Legle. And Legle. Uh, that's where, <laughs> yeah, that's where my friend's now husband uh, uh -huh. is from. He grew up there. So okay. it is your quintessential French countryside little town. All these <sighs> little French country homes and farms and happy cows. Oh, Delicious <laughs> cheese. Oh, oh my God. I seriously French cheese is the best. Like the hairier, the better. Oh <laughs> the my. stinky stuff no, yes, always no. tastes the best. But so creamy, like such yes. creamy cheese because, of course, the cows and the dairy and the butter, all of that. And is also so because good. not, I, I think it's the pasteurization, right? Yes. They don't pasteurize. That's so right. you That's don't right. get a sore stomach from yeah. eating all that cheese. That's right. So yeah. even if you have, lact if you're lactose intolerant, I am not, but I've been told. How are you not? I know I'm not. You're one of I'm the lucky not. Asians. Yes, yes. And, but I am one of the Asians who gets red when I drink. So I, I get I, both, but I don't care. Oh, you I do? do. <laughs> no, I that. eat cheese and I drink. <laughs> oh, I mean, I do too, but I mean, I, I do get the, I, I don't have that uh, missing enzyme, right? That's supposed to break down alcohol that a lot of Asians don't have. Yeah. But anyway, the cheese, 
the wine. Oh, here's the, the other bread. thing about. Okay, no, here's the other thing about France what, and what, what? wine. The, oh, some reason, and I I did some research on this after the fact, of course, because I really was curious. I could drink like a freaking fish. You know why? No long. preservatives and, no, and lower sugar. Oh, lower sugar. So this is what I learned. Okay, because my friends and I were like, oh my God, why is it that we could be drinking several glasses of champagne in the middle of the day, then go out and drink more wine at night and just keep drinking and oh just my be fine, right? A little tips to be, but fine. If I did that here, I would be dead. Okay. I would have the worst headaches because I get I, really major headaches yeah, from drinking, I especially wine. Out. Right. Yeah. So I learned from a winemaking friend of mine who imports wine from Europe, including France. And she said, well, May, it's because, yeah, there's not as much pre preservatives and the pesticides, um, they don't use as much pesticides, you know, when, when they're growing their grapes over there. And they don't add sugar. So the, the wine that's consumed in France and made in France and for domestic use, different level of sugar than what's exported to America because Why? they- So they add more sugar yeah. to the wine in, during the fermenting process or- Apparently so, apparently so. So it's just like the sugar content is higher and the alcohol content is higher. And so it's going to affect you, of course, differently. And Wait, so if totally we noticed. buy French wine, for instance- Yeah. Is Here. it going to be a different, like from the same vineyard, is it going to be that's, a different mix than whatever what she, they serve there? That's what she just told me. And th I, this was at a dinner party after I came back from France. And this woman's family uh, imports, exports wine from Europe. So oh, she went wow. on this whole tour to learn every detail about winemaking and like export, import business and all that and it, where they export to. And she learned that they do change the formula, you know, without like completely changing, you know, obviously the, the taste, taste. And the whole, like, you know. Because Americans just consume so much more, more sugar, sugar that we want even sugar in our wine. Yeah. What the and hell? And higher alcohol, alcohol content, apparently. So, so that those two things alone, apparently, obviously will have a completely different effect on you. Wow. And I absolutely noticed that as well as my other friends who are not Asian and they were saying the same thing. They're like, wow, I can drink 10 glasses of stuff here uh -huh. you know, and still be okay. Why is that? Uh, even in the pasta, if you go to Italy, you can eat so much more pasta. And, 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 and I just heard it was because there's a chemical that they put in the flour in the United States that's in all of our flour that they don't allow in Italy or I think most of Europe. I, I, it's just why why do we have so many things in the United States yeah. that kill us I in know. our food that is allowed that in Europe or other countries they just don't even allow. No. I mean it's ridiculous. Why it do we is. even have an FDA? It's true. It's true. So that it just makes you start really wondering, even if you're trying to eat healthy, if there's still additives you know, yeah. to these products, even th they're supposed to be natural, then, then what's the point? You know, I mean, right. I don't want to be totally negative about that because of course you want to be as healthy as possible, but it yeah. is, you know, if you, if you wonder about why we have so much sickness and disease and why now cancer rates are skyrocketing with younger people. Are they? Right? Oh yeah. More people in their forties and their thirties you know, are getting cancer and they're getting cancers that are totally unrelated, supposedly, to their behavior. For instance, lung cancer, oh. non-smoker, never smoked in their life, right? Why? Right? My mom thinks it's because of the, the shots, the vaccinations. Oh, really? My mom thinks a lot of things. <laughs> I mean, okay, so I know we kind of touched on this before about your mom and some other family members, right? So they're a little bit, let's say, more conservative-leaning. Yeah, politically than you yeah. are. And so yeah. that's my sort of mom is also very uh, gullible when it comes to conspiracy theory. Yes. Uh, she yes, said that. Yeah, she loves she spends all her time on YouTube. And so I think that's where she gets that kind of brainwashing. And she believes it. And she believes it. She believes everything. 
So when you try to talk to her or at least kind of try to have a conversation with her about some of these conspiracy theories, which is a great segue into what we wanted to talk about today, because there's so many conspiracy theories right now about the hurricanes in Florida. We're going to get to that in a second. But when you try to reason with her a little bit about these conspiracy theories, what what does she say? She gets either very defensive or she insists that she knows the truth because she knows which outlets to get her news from. Okay. Like she's like, she's, she, she's the one who has like the in to all of the special information that nobody else knows. And, and she thinks that she's got this in because. Because she just knows who to follow. Oh, who to follow. Okay. Okay. Yeah, here, here's the thing. I mean, look, your mom is not, not unlike a lot of people right now in this My country, mom is not right? an idiot either. Right, that's the thing. That, that's she's, what I was saying. She's, she's a not very an smart woman. She's educated, she's smart. She's, you know, she's just incredibly gullible. Hmm. You know, and, and even before all of this, you know, uh, internet, she yeah. was always kind of gullible. She would believe anything. She loves gossip. She would always... Hmm. Uh, by the National Enquirer every week, you know, like religiously, like that was her Bible, her second Bible. And she believed it. She believed Um, it. And she believed all of it. And I would even, I would say, why are you buying this? Why are you wasting your money on this? You know, it's not true. And she goes, oh, it has to be true. She like, they would get sued. And I was like, they get sued all the time. (laughs) (laughs) I said, what, what would you do if one day I ended up in the National Enquirer? And she goes, you just better not do anything to get yourself in there. Oh my and sure I almost, enough, I got in the National Enquirer I almost, once. I was just going to yeah. say, I almost and wish it was, I had been. And it was actually misinformation. What was it? What was it? It said that I had left a, a Maxim party with Chris Judd and went back to my room. And that obviously was a lie. And that obviously was a lie. Okay, so you couldn't use that. Seth as Green example? walked me to my room. <laughs> But he didn't come inside. He just, he was very much a gentleman. He just walked me to my room. Okay. But, but, but that's the kind of misinformation. They just make up all kinds of stuff. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So, you you know, here's, I, I always teach my students this lesson, um, my journalism students about the difference between misinformation and disinformation. And this is something everybody needs to be aware of. Misinformation is uh, often unintentional, meaning Uh. you believe it like your mom might believe it and she's going to pass it on because she actually believes it. Right. So she doesn't think it's, you know, false. Mm -hmm. That's misinformation. Disinformation is when it's intentional. Someone has created something completely false and some often very dangerous. And then they're passing that on. So that's disinformation. So we're seeing a lot of both. YouTube video that I just sent you. Right. So let's talk about this. So everyone, of course, I'm sure you're aware that there's these hurricanes that have been just absolutely devastating Florida and other states. First, we had Helene. 260 people have died because of that. And then we saw flooding in places like Asheville, North Carolina, which is in the mountains. Right. How the heck? Exactly. That's when you know something really is going awry, you know, with with climate change. Now we have Milton. Today is uh, Wednesday, the 9th of October. So uh, when we're recording this. So right now, Florida is bracing for yet another hurricane. But this is going to be a massive exodus. They're saying this is the worst storm that they've really ever seen. Right. So it's Cat 5, Category 5 right now. Um, so just yesterday, yeah. So tell us what happened because this is weird. So just yesterday, somebody, this guy who I haven't talked to in probably over ten years, probably a good, I'm going to say fifteen years. Okay. Um, just out of the blue, sends me this text, this video, which is um a, a link to these two guys, some general or something even, talking about how uh, Biden and the U.S. government or, you know, the Democrats have created this, these hurricanes in these red states so that people cannot vote. Right. From, you know, right. the election next month. Yeah. So they're, say- they're claiming that they have the technology to manipulate the weather and create hurricanes. Yeah. Actually, create them through like geothermal 
what energy or whatever. I, I looked at part of that clip that you sent me. Um, so they're saying that there's proof and evidence of this. Uh, and so that is one of the major conspiracy theories that's floating around right now. And people are buying into it. People I know. buying into it. Yeah. It's, it's so scary. It's, it's scary. because people are looking for any excuse to hate the other side. Yeah. And, and, and put blame on the other side. You know, people who are, you know, not in, in their camp. Yeah. In, you it's know, amazing. part of their tribe. So here's, here's what's amazing to me about all of what's going on with these hurricanes is that everything now is being politicized everything, everything. A, fucking hurricane. a hurricane that's killing people right killing people and because of this misinformation disinformation campaign it's going to kill more people because this right. is what's now because people being, are not leaving they're not leaving because they don't believe yeah. it or they think oh this is all manipulated oh i'm gonna stand my ground um, some people do that because they just want to stay on their property. Okay. I mean, that, that happens, right? That's their Others choice. are being influenced by this disinformation campaign. And then on top of that, what's being talked about today, I was uh, listening to this press conference where FEMA was sort of, um, uh, providing information to president Biden, vice president Kamala Harris and in the cabinet saying that because of all of this misinformation that's being disseminated by Unfortunately, and I'm not being political here, it's just a fact by Republican, some Republican leaders, um, one of whom is running for president, um, <laughs> saying that FEMA is taking funds that should be going to disaster relief and sending it to illegal immigrants. Um, and so it's not being used properly and allocated properly to the people who right. really need it. It's completely wholly false, right? So yes, it's true that FEMA has sent money and used money for these immigration camps and things like that, you know, and mm -hmm. shelters, but it's completely- That's what FEMA is for. It is a completely separate budget from disaster relief, right? right. So he's just kind of like tr trying to throw everything together in one box. And then he's also claimed that FEMA um, is only providing $750 uh, for disaster relief per hurricane victim that is for it. now for now uh, that's for immediate, immediate needs right like the diapers, same the same misinformation was going on in in lahaina hawaii right yes 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 and people and then, people hated fema over there right and the other conspiracy theory that's going on same that happened in hawaii is that fema is trying is is taking people's land yes after a disaster yes totally untrue and so oh, they were yeah. like, don't, don't accept money from FEMA because they're going to own your property. Right. Don't answer their yeah. questions. Don't fill out any forms. Well, guess what? If you don't do that and if you don't properly go through FEMA, you will not get the disaster relief. Right. The right? problem is there are bad actors out there who are scammers. impersonating FEMA Absolutely. You know, uh, agents. That's where you do have to make sure you look at their credentials and they have all the paperwork, all that. And FEMA is, they have all of that. What's happening now because of this, again, because of all these rumors that are being spread that are false, FEMA, people on the ground are getting death threats. Oh they're my gosh. Threatened. Yes. They're getting death threats from people because they're saying you're, you're fake, you're this or that, and they're getting death threats. So they can't even do their jobs. Oh my God. Yeah. So this is where we're at, right? And so my fear, and it should be a lot of people's fear, is that because of all of this rumor, hearsay, false reporting, and, you know, and, and obviously, you know, again, misinformation and disinformation, it's people are going to die. More people are going to die. Yeah. And who's, you know, I mean, it, it, I always like to, like to think, oh, my God, there's like going to be blood on your hands, you know, whoever's fault that is. But it's, they don't it's, think so. Yeah. They think it's blood on every on the other side's I hands. Know, I know. And that's that's the issue. But here's what is also very telling. Uh, many Republicans have tried to tell Donald Trump to stop this, to stop saying this because they oh. know, oh, yeah, there's a whole line of Republicans right now saying you, you've got to stop. This is not true. You got to stop saying this. Um, well, go so, after Marjorie Taylor Greene. Uh, well, she make her stop. She's she she's perpetuating. She's the queen this. of of disinformation. Yeah, and she's perpetuating the whole like de Democrats are uh, manip manipulating the weather. So, oh, no, it's, is it's, she the one who started that? I'm not sure if she started it, but she's certainly saying it over and over again. 
Um, that is a woman who is full of hate. Yes, she is. Yeah, without a doubt. I think I think uh, you know that's 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 a fact. Yeah, <laughs> that's not fake. That's, that's her whole that's her you know M O is yeah. is is fear and hate. It is. You know is. that woman does not even know what it is to to. So, okay, so let me ask you this: this person who sent you that <clears throat> video, let's go back to that. Do you know anything about him or like why? He I, I haven't had contact video? with this person in, like I said, at least fifteen years, if not more. And then this just came out of the blue. So that's so strange. Like, why, why would he send this to you when he's never, he hasn't had contact with you? Does he I think mean, could, it be, it could it be that his, his, his site or his phone got hacked or something? But why would it get hacked with that video I, of all things? Unless he thinks because you have a big platform that you may buy into it and... Well, I mean, we are talking he about it. He clearly right doesn't follow me because I'm not the kind of person who who puts that kind of stuff on my platform. Well, again, I mean, this is what's happening. The spread of this kind of stuff all over. I think you know they kind of like throw it against the wall to see what sticks. Yeah. And maybe maybe that's what he's doing as well. Who knows? I'm you know who's to also, say. Also, you know, I live in a purple state in a purple county, so it uh, could be. Maybe. That maybe. maybe I'm getting targeted. Oh, that's true. You are in Nevada. So yeah, that's, you know, yeah. it's your state. I, I'm not surprised if that's what's happening to my mom. Maybe. That's what's been happening to my mom for the last well, six years. Okay. Well, because she's already sort of in that world. So of course right. they're going to use the algorithm to target what she's already been watching. So she's right. be, probably being even more inundated with Basically, all Basically, I'm just here to cancel out all my mom's votes. <laughs> <laughs> well, here's the thing, Kelly. You know what I find so interesting is that you moved to Vegas, right? For, um, you know, uh, a variety of reasons, including being closer to your, your mom. Well, that's the main reason is just yeah. to get closer yeah. to my parents. Um, but there are so many people moving to Vegas for there a are. variety of reasons. One of which is, of course, because there's no state tax. You know, people want to avoid that. Yeah. And then also it's just more affordable, you know, yeah. especially from California. But I, I'm wondering if that's going to make a difference because so many Californians are going to, you know, Nevada, if that could tip, I don't know, could tip the balance a little bit. I, I would like to say that it is, but driving around here, you know, oh. especially in my neighborhood, um, all I see are Trump signs. Oh, really? Like 90% Trump signs. Really? Hardly any signs for Kamala. Wait, okay. Um, so, so, but, uh, and it might also be because maybe Trumpers are just a little bit more outspoken. Like, for instance, I wouldn't want to put a Kamala Harris sign out on my front lawn because I don't want my neighbors to hate me. Well, if, I don't well, want them to well, retaliate in any kind okay, of way. If 90% of the signs in your neighborhood are Trump signs, I, I don't blame you. And, right. here, okay, this is, okay, I, I'm so glad you just brought that up because this is sort of a, sort of a question that like I, I've internalized as well, because, you know, I am a Harris Walls supporter because I believe in like country over politics right now, because I think mm. we're at, this is an existential moment for all, all of us. Right. Mm -hmm. So, um, but I w am, a, I, I am a little fearful to put a sign on my house. And I yeah. think that comes from all the hate you know, and division that exists, but on top of so that- So much aggression, right. Yeah, and then on top of that, we're Asian. And I, right. I'm fearful that that's like two strikes against us. Like it's like, okay, so we're declaring that we're supporting, you know, the Democratic Party and the ticket. And then on top of that, we're minorities. Right. And so I just would, I just think to myself, my God, I'm, am I being a wimp, you know, and not sort of declaring what I believe or is this just also self-preservation to a certain extent? Because of everything we've been through as Asians in the last couple of years. Yeah. Right. With anti-Asian hate. So right. that's part of it for me too. Yeah. Part of it for yeah. me too. I do, I do fear for retaliation yeah. on some sort, on some level, you yeah. know, even though I live in a good neighborhood. Right. Because uh, you never know when that time comes when you're in time of need, if your neighbors are going to not help you because they think that you're a Democrat and you're just from the other side. Right. You know, I mean, right. 
but okay. I don't, and why, why would I even take that chance? And so I'm just going to be really, really judgy for a second um, about people who <laughs> do put up Trump flags in front of their house. So to me, that means, so you are supporting a felon, a criminal, a rapist, a molester, but they think it's all trumped up stuff. They think that no those. No pun intended. Yeah. No, um, no pun intended. But they, my mom thinks that that is all, it's all fake made news. up. All made up. She thinks it's all made up. Every single yeah. incident. Yeah. Okay. And then the, the pussy grabbing comment, that was okay. She thinks that that it was made up too. That was made up too. Oh my. God. And I was like, you realize that was before AI, <sighs> but you cannot convince her otherwise. So that's the excuse. That's always going to be the go-to for his yeah. supporters is fake that news. everything is made and up. that's the brilliance <laughs> of fake news, yeah. right? That's you the, can just lay it on anything. Wash. Yeah, it's a, yeah. all a wash because it's all fake news. So it, it, yes. it doesn't matter what it is. Yes. Right. On so either even side. If, even if it's on video, even if it's right there in front of your face, they're still yes. going to say, this is not real. Yes. Isn't that scary? And, what, and that's the scary thing about AI. Because, because, they, because people are not going to know what is real and not real. That's right. That's right. Even you and I yeah. are not going to know. Nope. Nope. I mean, right now, now when I see images that, you know, are a little strange, I'll be like, that's not real. That's, that's, right. that's AI manipulated. And you can still tell. It, AI um, um, videos and images are still not perfected. So you, but it's so close. Different. It's very no. It's very good. It's ve it's very close, and so it will close. get there in the next couple of months. Oh yeah, it will. You're right. You're it's, right. It, you know, by next summer, we yeah. are not going to be able to tell the difference. And voices. Things advance so quickly now at this yeah. stage. Yeah. <clears throat> Especially AI. You know, it 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 feeds onto itself, right? Yeah. Oh yeah. So really? so I things are going to to advance so quickly. I think that's why. There are people who are putting out also disinformation to to screw up AI. AI. Uh, like I think that's kind of funny. Oh, that's actually kind but, of funny. I didn't even think of that. Yeah, yeah. just mess up the 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 sort of information that it's collecting. Right. Oh, see, so now it's like, who knows what's up and what's down? Because right now we seem to be living in the upside down world for sure already. Yeah. Um, but I will say though, ChatGPT can be very useful. I use it on a fairly regular basis for everything. Do you? Yeah. I've never tried using it for anything. Oh, I'm too scared. <laughs> no, 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 no. The open AI, the free chat GPT, it's, it's actually quite straightforward. What do you use it for? Oh, I've used it for everything from put, put together an itinerary for Paris. It just to see oh. what, what ideas it gives me. Or, wow. And, yeah, yeah. And then I'll do- I'm going to Paris next week. Yes, oh, you are? Yeah. Girl, you cannot stand it, sit in one place for very long, can you? Why are well, you going to Paris? I, yeah, I'm going for a charity event, so. Oh, fun. Yeah, since I'm not working, I might as well. Yeah, Paris is beautiful. I mean, I, we can get back to our travels again, but Paris yeah. is a beautiful place. Oh, if I you should do a chance, what? you should go to the Christian Dior exhibit. Ooh, that. where is that? In Christian Dior? Wait, is it a museum? Where? What? No, it's an exhibit that um, I, I'm not sure how long ago they opened this up. It's been fairly recent, maybe in the last like year or two, but it is a whole retrospective of his like sort of design Ooh. and life, right? But it's beautifully curated. The exhibit okay. is- it's, it's Wait, did you see it or did you see just on- I saw it. You, oh, you I, saw it yeah, in person in Paris, when you were there. Yeah. Ooh, yes. okay. Um, I will do that. And if you do that, if you have time beforehand, and I really, really wish I had done this, I wish I had watched the series on Apple TV called oh. The New Look. Oh, okay. It's based on historical fact during the four years of Nazi occupation of Paris. And how what it does that affected, have to do with him? How it affected fashion designers of haute couture. People like Christian Dior, what? Coco Chanel, Pierre Cardin, uh, Balenciaga, all Ooh. these guys and women were in Paris and they were affected by the Nazi occupation, but it's such a fascinating series. Well, they're not all Jewish. No, no. Interesting. Were, okay, now I got to watch. It's, it's so well done and it's so beautiful because the fashion is incredible, but it talks about Christian Dior and his history and mm -hmm. his relationship with his younger sister, who was uh, part of the French resistance. Oh. And so if I had seen the series before I went to the, see the exhibit, it, so much of the exhibit would, been, would have been so much more powerful. 
I will definitely check that yeah. out. I highly okay. recommend it. Um, I highly recommend Say it again. What is the title? Head. It's called The New Look. The New Look. The okay. New Look, which was what they deemed um, fashion uh, in Paris was after the war ended. So they had to oh, create wow. the new look for, to save the fashion houses of, of Paris uh, and haute couture. Isn't it's that interesting so, how yeah. something political can, can yes. affect something like fashion? You but would it never makes think sense because it's still art, right? And art and fashion and, you know, culture all blend together. And then of course, hmm. you know, depending on the politics, depending on war, it's going to have an impact. Right. Yeah. So what was interesting was that it talks about how some fashion houses just to stay alive during that time, they had to keep on designing, but they knew that they were designing for the Nazis, like the women of the Nazis and the, the you know, the Third Reich. Right. So they, you know, so it went against their values, obviously, but some chose to continue working because they had to survive. Mm. And then others chose not to because Ooh, of value. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's really a tough choice. Yeah. Very yeah. tough choice. Very tough choice. So anyway, but if you, but go to the Christian Dior exhibit anyway, cause it's gorgeous. I will you have to get tickets though. Oh, you have to get tickets. okay. Yeah. I will buy them right um, now yeah. uh, after this, and, but try to watch the series beforehand, but it, because I think it'll like completely blow your mind when you go to the exhibit. Okay. The new yeah. look. Anyway. Okay. So thank that, you for that. Yes, you're welcome. Paris tip. <laughs> so going back to ChatGPT, so I use it for everything for, for uh, fun stuff, like travel itineraries or this or that. But then I'll, you know, ask it about different things going on. Like, for instance, you know, I ask, ask questions about um, history, you know, oh. that I know is going to be able to pull from everything that's on the internet anyway, right? So okay. I do, well, I will ask sort of data questions or whatever. And then do you have does, to double like, check it though for information? Yeah. So here's what I do. If it doesn't cite the source properly, mm -hmm. um, then I will go and fact check just to make sure if it seems weird. Right. Because uh, Joe Schmo could be like putting out disinformation just to exactly. screw with chat GPT. But if I'm going to ask a question that I know it, there's so much information about this out there already on the internet, for instance, if I put together a lecture on the history of journalism and I want, you know, information about Walter Cronkite and Edward R. Murrow and Barbara Walters, right? I know their history, but I'm going to ask ChatGPT to put together all those sources and that information so that I don't have to take the time to go and do that. It does it oh. in seconds. It does it in seconds. Okay. Right? Because that information I know has been fact checked and is correct because there's so much information out there about those three people. Right. So it's not something so abstract that ChatGPT might be like, oh, I don't know. So I'm just going to. So make it's just it faster than having to look it up on Google oh yourself. My God. It's so much faster, Kelly. It's, it's instant. Mm. It's actually instant. Yeah. That's okay. what's really like kind of sort of alarming about it. But at the same time, you're like amazed by it. So can I go onto ChatGPT and ask what is the best? I don't know, television projector out right now. Yeah. Because I'm know. always looking up, like when I buy stuff, yep. I always try to look up, you know, like things that have been reviewed and, and tested. So something, yeah. so something like that, it's not going to give it your, it, its opinion. What it's going to do is it's going to cite all, all probably a bunch of different sources like okay. CNET and like whatever, you know, all these different mm -hmm. sources and talk about like what they're saying, mm -hmm. the ratings are, right? Okay. But what it will probably do is uh, cite a bunch of different sources instead of you Googling and then having to look at each article. Yes. Right? It'll probably just put everything together for you. And that's the advantage of ChatGPT GPT because it'll just put everything together in one fell swoop. Wow. Technology is moving way too quickly for it's, me now. You know, I feel like my grandpa. No. You know, my seriously. grandpa for the longest time wouldn't use an ATM because he thought that it would make more mistakes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He, I mean, he would always go in to the teller. Okay. He would never use an ATM. So that's, that's the, that's technology always has been the case. Any kind of new technologies, there's always a bit of skepticism, mm -hmm. right? And caution because you just don't know. So mm -hmm. that happened with computers that happened with the internet. You know, everybody was a little bit suspicious about like, wow. And the, you know, of, of course also about like job elimination. 
right? Technology yeah. is always talking about that. Like look at yeah. Hollywood, right? The AI, AI is is threatening, you know, different aspects of Hollywood. So, yeah. you know, so every evolution that we have, there's always that fear, right? But then we mm -hmm. eventually come around to it because it's inevitable and we yeah. just get used to it and adopt it. Now, as technology speeds up even more at like this record lightning speed, is it going to overtake us to the point where we won't have any more control? Like, you know, there's no, there's no like sort of time to adapt to it. It's just going to keep on going, you know, so that we can't even catch up anymore. I don't and know. That could happen within our lifetime. Uh, very much so. Very much so. Yeah. Yeah. So, I don't so, know. <laughs> so, okay, I'm going to have to make an admission here. I went down the rabbit hole because I saw this one post on Instagram about these earthquakes in the sky that sounded, that were in like different areas that sounded like trumpets and they actually had like video and i was like trumpets in the sky is this the end of the world i know it's like, I started, like googling like end of world and nostradamus and like i spent an entire like eight hours you watching videos i went down the rabbit hole wait so what what uh, were these videos like real they're or? still unexplained yeah i think they're real did they sound like trumpets not exactly like trumpets, but they sounded like, you know, and I was immediately, I was like, oh my God, is it the end of the world? Do I have to start going to church now? Because well, my mom keeps saying that I'm going to go to hell. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'll go to hell, but not just for not going to church. <laughs> oh, God. okay. Yeah. Yeah. We, we, that's another episode. Um, <laughs> yeah. End of the world. Look, I have a lot of like, you know, sort of like, I've done a lot of research on that stuff too, as a Christian and Re book of revelation and all that stuff, there's a lot of the predictions that are supposed to happen, you know, as we huh. go near, uh -huh. um, I'll just leave it with this. A lot of shit is happening. Yeah. A lot of shit is happening. But, and, and it could yeah. have been that all of this shit was happening. A lot of shit has been happening for centuries, but we exactly. just didn't have the information and, right. and the knowledge, yes. you know, to be yeah. able to know that it was all happening. Exactly. exactly. So, so yeah. yeah, but you're not going to go to hell. Ellie Hill. <laughs> According to my mom, I am because <laughs> I don't go to church. <laughs> well, church doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to go to hell, but uh, yeah, I think it is it, if you're Roman Catholic. <laughs> oh, she's Roman Catholic? Does she yes, go to I'm church Roman every Catholic. week? Well, she watches church on her iPad. Oh, okay. Okay. That's Virtual her going church. to church. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Cause you know, it started during the pandemic where, yeah. you know, she didn't want to actually go. And now she's just sort of in the habit of watching church service on her iPad and that's her going to church. And so she, she still faults me for not going to church and telling me that I have to go to church cause you know, it's required, <laughs> but, but like, I mean, is she going to church? Technically? No. <laughs> Do you consider yourself a Roman Catholic yourself or? No, no, no. Okay. No. Okay. But I think that I do a lot for charities and I think I'm a really, really good person. I think I'm a better person than most religious people that I know. <laughs> well, I wouldn't argue with that in terms of when you see what the extremist Christian nationalists are doing and what they're touting, you know, especially mm. now with this election season, um, they are certainly the antithesis of what, you know, being like, divisive, you know, being kind to your neighbors and, you know, and, and, and showing those values of, of Jesus Christ. Right. Mm. It's like, they're doing exactly the opposite of what's, what's taught. So yeah. that's where religion and especially Christianity is being blasted because there is just total hypocrisy. You know, I heard on um, The Economist that more women are actually pulling away from religion than men. Oh, that's interesting. Isn't it? But I, I found that to be very you interesting. You know what? I, I actually, so are they pulling away from religion, just like organized religion or they're just organized like religion? Um, yeah. Organized. I okay. think it, it has to do with the fact that women ha in so many religions are treated as second. Second class yeah. citizens. Yeah. 
oppressive. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Submissive I think, um, and, yeah. you know, yeah. I mean, just that whole thing about having to um, honor your husband and follow him. And I'm like, mm, I don't think so. <laughs> yeah, no, I think we're seeing that shift uh, for a variety of reasons. And, you know, we can get into this topic the next time we talk with Tamlin, because this is a, a, a subject that um, interests all three of us. But it yeah. really is about women's rights. You know, we should uh, maybe uh, ask chat GBT and do some more research. <laughs> Well, actually, I did use ChatGPT to get prepared for today's conversation that we're not having because Tamlin can't join us. Oh, so it's very useful. Okay, for data okay. it's very useful. You know, if again, you you have to make sure the source sources it's coming from a good source. But, but yeah, so my my head just hurt when you said that. <laughs> I was just thinking of all the information it out is. there. I know <gasps> that's it's why exhausting. it is exhausting. So that's why, as a journalist, I believe me. As a journalist, that's what we have to do. We have to source check, triple check, whatever. But when we have now this tool that can help us sort of um, get through all of that and then condense it for us, but then we also make sure that it's accurate, it does. Yeah. It is a time saver. I will say it's yeah. really useful that good. way. Um, good. Yeah. yeah. I'm glad um, that you can find that useful. Yeah, for sure, for sure. But uh, but I'm going back to why why, why women are maybe pulling away from organized religion? Yeah, it's because. You know, we're losing our rights. We're losing our identities. We're, you know, we're we're being almost dehumanized in some ways. You know, by uh, by certain policies. And so, even conservative women, I think, are starting to feel like, whoa, what what is going on here? What is right. happening? Right. right. So that doesn't surprise me. Um, I do feel sorry for men. A lot of men in these days, because I feel like men feel as though they're being attacked all the time <laughs> by women. Um, you know, that whole, I choose the bear. Um, and it's not all men that are, that should deserve to be treated this way, yeah. but it seems as though, you know, people just group people together. And so many men are feeling as though they are being unappreciated or, um, disrespected or, you know, and this is where the divide gets even further, right? This is where, uh, you know, it's just, it, it gets worse and worse, right? Yeah. Cause yeah. there's, uh, certain outspoken women who are just hating all of men period. And, <laughs> um, and yeah, and men are feeling attacked and I don't blame yeah. them. No, no, no. I, I agree with you. I think there is an element of maybe, you know, going too far when yeah. it comes to like being anti, anti-male, right? Right. And but, this is not why so many guys think the word feminist is actually a bad thing. Right, right. But, yeah. but on the flip side, because, um, you know, I've, I've seen this happen and I actually um, uh, was personally, uh, personally experienced a young wh white male coming after me um, because he was so fragile. Um, oh. This is actually a student. Oh. Um, and so I got a glimpse at what's happening to the male, the gender, the male gender. Okay. Uh, uh -huh. But, okay, so how, what am I trying to say? What I'm trying to say is sometimes I'm, I'm not as sympathetic. And the reason why is because how long have men, especially white men, been at the top of the heap? How long have they been fully in control and have never had to think about being persecuted or doubted right. or questioned right. you know, of any of their rights or abilities, intelligence, mm. none of that, right? Because they've always been at the top. Yeah. That must be a great feeling, right? right. To never, never worry about any of that. Right. As but women here, of so, color, we know what that's like, right? So, absolutely. So I'll just finish. So there is that part where I say, yes, I understand that maybe the pendulum has swung, you know, pretty extreme in some ways when it comes to anti male, da da da. But I also think that it is shifting, that society shifting, and men, hmm. you know, they need to also adjust and not play victim so much. Because I do see that too. I'm like, well, how does it feel? Hmm. Right. Well, maybe you just need to start getting adjusted, just readjust a little bit and yeah. not think that you have to cling on 
to this, those last bits of power and start rethinking some mm -hmm. things. There's, there, there's always a balance, right? I mean, there are always people who are going to get hurt. Yes. Uh, just uh, people who don't deserve to necessarily be, you know, pushed into that that yeah. sort of yeah. grouping. Look, I think that's that's what ha what's happening right now in politics too, you know, with, with the sort of extreme, well, you know. The problem extreme. is we only have two candidates. Yes. And, and so there is only extreme. Yeah. Yeah. You know, unfortunately. And I don't know. I mean, they've locked it in so hard. I don't know if, if we can ever change that. You mean the two party system? Two party system. Yeah. I mean, and we've I think tried. we've tried with thir a third party, but that's never been successful. So, you know, right. look, I always say it's like, yeah, this is what we got. Okay. You know, so there's nothing we can do about it right now in terms of like voting for a third party or not voting at all, like sitting on your couch and not voting. Please don't do that. Okay, because you need to exercise your right to vote. Yes, maybe you think I don't like any of these candidates, but then check yourself in terms of what what do you, what kind of future do you want right. for yourself and this country? Especially if you live in a purple state. Look, but it is important to go to the polls, and even if you don't care about the presidency, there are other things other that issues. you have to There's other issues other propositions. Of exactly, course absolutely. And exactly. then if you care about if you only care about what happens in your own backyard, then you should actually vote because yes. those issues are on the ballot. Your local because on on those odd years when there is no president to vote for, yeah, the midterms. Yeah, the few people who go to vote are the ones who make all the decisions. That's right. It's so if you don't go and vote, do not complain. It's so you true. cannot complain. That's you right. gotta shut up. That's right. Yeah, but this this election. Uh, like it or not, is definitely, and we hear this all the time, it's said over and over again, but it's true. It is uh, the most consequential election. Yeah. Um, and it's kind of an existential um, election because yeah. which way are we going to go as a country and our democracy, right? Um, and I, I hate to say this, but I do think it's going to be a shit show either way. Yes. Um, it will. There, there will be some chaos and um, hopefully- Brace yourselves. We do have to brace ourselves for that. But speaking of voting, I got my ballot in the mail the other day. I haven't gotten mine yet. You haven't? Okay. No. I got mine the other day. So that is a little slow. Yeah, I'm going to do my research. I, I, Again, I do my research when it comes to all the ballot initiatives and candidates and stuff like that. So I don't just like that. How do you find out about your judges? Uh, That's I, a hard I, one. Yeah, I've done I've I've done that many times. I try to try to look up articles, you know, mm -hmm. so I'll use Google. Maybe this time I'll use ChatGPT. But Ooh. I look up articles just to read about what has been said or written about the candidate. Sometimes uh -huh. you can't find anything actually. So uh, yes, I know. Something. I've tried. It's not guaranteed that you'll find something on every judge. So, uh -huh. but I will do my best to try to find some you know, valid information about each candidate. My point is that we still live in a, the most powerful democracy on the planet. Yeah. There our right to vote is, you know, that's our freedom, right? Yeah. People die in other countries for the right to vote and be heard. So yes. let's take advantage of that right, because that is what, that's the direction of our country, depending on how this election, you know, the outcome of this election. Absolutely. No. We are so, very lucky. No yeah. matter how fucked up we think this country <laughs> is, we are still one of the best countries out there to live yeah. in. And we yeah. still have a democracy. And so we so far. It's up to <laughs> no, but it's up to us to keep it that way. I know. Exactly. Exactly. And that's it, that's got to be that's got to mean something to each and every one of us. And if it doesn't, then go back and read some history. <laughs> yes. about what happened and you know where how far we've come but how much more work we need to do we do not want to go backwards and to steal somebody's campaign slogan we are not going back right mm. we don't want to go back so no. um but on that note i think this was a really good conversation i know Kelly who with and but we, of course we missed our darling sister tamlin so because she slept in she would have had so much great input for she sure. would have, always, we're, gonna, yeah. we're shooting another show um very soon and i don't want to jinx it i know don't say it don't say it, it. Uh, okay. <laughs> but we're gonna shoot another show so very soon with tamlin so um okay out for that but um but yeah everyone 
please continue to follow us on Instagram, on social media, you know, give us likes, show, give us likes, give us reviews, all that good stuff, because we love you guys. Um, and uh, give us the reviews, last even if you hate us. That's true. You know, good or bad, we want to hear from you. Right? Yeah. 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 So we don't care. Kelly, but Kelly, <laughs> every time I post a video of the show on social media, Kelly, who gets at least like three marriage proposals. It's <laughs> It's seriously, it's, I, I wait for them. I'm like, oh, there you go. There you go. I want to see bank accounts, bank statements. <laughs> but the last video kidding. that we put on, what we tried, we <laughs> failed. We had an epic fail trying to record oh a gosh. show. And so I put and this on. This is how you know we're old. Oh my God. Right? It was, it was bad. This is, yeah. So I this put is on the blooper. like such an old lady. Yeah. And we, it, we just have to laugh about it because we it's, did. And we laughed our asses off because I put on the bloopers <laughs> because we were just losing it. Okay. We were losing it because it was such an epic fail. And then one part looked <gasps> oh. like a bad 70s porn flick. Thanks um, to me. <laughs> yeah, thanks to I know. That should be a teaser for everyone. <laughs> I can watch that. But, um, but we were laughing so hard. The comments on that clip, people were saying, <laughs> Oh my God, I could just watch this kind of material all day long. Another person said, Tamlin, what gummies are you eating? I mean, like, they, people loved it. They thought it was mm, they I, like I, watching us fail. Seriously. Noted. But, yeah. <laughs> if nothing else, we ladies like to have fun. We do. Oh, and we, we so don't. We can't take that. ourselves too seriously. Exactly. exactly. And that's the beauty of getting older, too. You don't give a shit. You should kind of. <laughs> Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> so, so on that My note. My shits have left the building. <laughs> exactly. So on that note, look forward to getting older, everyone. It's it's fun. It you is. let loose and you don't care. So, I love it. Yeah. All right, my dear. Love you. Love and you I'll, too. I'll see Big you kiss. Soon. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye.